In this video, we'll be going over IRS Form 8936, Clean Vehicle Credits. Uh, this is a completely different form from what used to exist. I believe it was called the Qualified Electric Plug-in Vehicle Credit or, or something like that. Uh, it was part a, of a, a series of tax forms that the IRS had in place to allow uh, ve vehicle owners who were trying to claim a tax credit for an alternative fuel vehicle, plug-in, hybrid. Uh, there were different uh, tax forms uh, in place. And then the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 uh, helped to clarify some of the tax law and around claiming credits. So the IRS in 2023 uh, came up with a new version of IRS Form 8936 to really try to streamline some of this and then also uh, make changes out of respect for uh, the tax law changes, the updates to the Internal Revenue Code that were passed in 2022. So there are actually two parts to this that we're going to go over in the video. Uh, there's IRS Form 8936. We'll walk through that. Uh, but we're going to first go through Schedule A. So this is, uh, I, I thought of creating S Schedule A on a separate uh, video. Uh, but since you need at least one Schedule A to go ahead and do IRS Form 8936, I figured I'd walk through Schedule A. And then we can go back and uh, go to this uh, uh, form. The one thing that I want to point out is that there are completely new vehicle requirements. There are completely new uh, other reporting requirements. So you may want to determine if you uh, personally qualify for the tax credit. You would do this by going through part one to calculate your modified adjusted gross income amount. And if you exceed certain thresholds, then you won't be able to claim the credit on at least uh, the, uh, the vehicles listed in Part 2, which is the business and investment use, Part 3, which is the uh, personal use, or Part 4, which is the uh, credit for a previously owned vehicle. Uh, some business owners may still claim a credit for qu uh, qualified commercial clean vehicles, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go over all of this stuff. And if you only need one or the other, I will try and insert a timestamp into the show notes to let you know uh, at what point we start talking about IRS Form 8936 uh, after we've completed the Schedule A portion. So let's go to Schedule A, and we're going to walk through this step by step. So... The first thing to note is that there are five parts to Schedule A. You're not going to complete all five parts of any one form, but you may find yourself completing several uh, parts of different forms. So the, the IRS requirements are uh, each vehicle, uh, whether it's a commercial, business, or an individual, whether it's new or previously owned, each separate vehicle warrants its own Schedule A that will accompany the completed Form 8936 on your income tax return. So uh, Schedule A is designed so that you can calculate the credit amount for uh, each particular vehicle. And then eight of the form itself will uh, capture the totals of each category. So in Part 1, we're going to enter the vehicle details. In Part 2, we're going to determine whether there's a credit for the business or investment use part of a new clean vehicle. In part three, uh, we'll determine the credit amount for personal use of a new clean vehicle. Part four, we'll calculate the credit for a previously owned vehicle. And then in part five, we'll calculate the credit amount for a qualified commercial clean vehicle. So if you are calculating part two and part three, then obviously, Parts four and five are not necessary. If you're calculating part four, then parts two, three, and five would not apply. And if you're calculating part five, then the other parts don't apply. So let's go to the top. 
Uh, you'll see our hero John Doe has entered his information at the very top of the form. John Doe, identifying number, and then uh, the line one is the year, make, and model of a car. Uh, prior uh, versions of this form required uh, the manufacturer to certify that they had not met a certain production quota. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act completely eliminated the reporting requirements on the form from the manufacturer's perspective. So, uh, you know, Tesla, which was phased out in prior tax years, is no longer phased out. Uh, so we're simply going to use this information uh, and reference uh, the information where you can get it from the dealership. So in this case is a 2023 Tesla Model X. You would enter the VIN number, the vehicle ID number, which you can obtain from registration, the title when, when it's transferred to you, uh, the actual car. Uh, it's usually inscribed in several places like the door, the dash. You can get it from uh, uh, your proof of insurance when you set up your insurance. So uh, the VIN number should be fairly easy to locate. And then in line three, we'll enter the date that the vehicle was placed into service. So that should be the day that you drove it off the lot or the day that you took physical possession of it. If you're buying it online, uh, there, or if you're buying it and then not able to accept delivery until a later date, that may be the there may be a difference between the date of sale and the date they placed it into service. But if you're driving it off the lot, it's going to be the date of the sale. In line four, uh, starting with line four, we're going to answer four yes, no questions. Uh, the obvious point is if you answer the wrong question, then you can't claim a tax credit. We'll walk through each one of these. So uh, the first question in line four, was this vehicle primarily used outside the United States. So you should answer no if it was, but there's an exception that applies. You can find the uh, exceptions in uh, Internal Revenue Code uh, 168, uh, Section G, uh, subsection 4. Uh, that contains a list of exceptions, but it's fairly vague. So uh, you really need to understand your particular situation to know if it qualifies under uh, IRC Section 168G. If it was primarily used outside the United States, then you can't claim a credit. Uh, if no, then answer no, go to the next line. Uh, lines one through, or five, six, and seven will help you determine which part of the tax form you complete. So. Does the VIN belong to a new clean vehicle placed in the service? If yes, go to part two. If no, go to the next line. Uh, does the VIN uh, belong to a previously owned clean vehicle? Then go to part four. If no, go to the next line. Uh, does the VIN belong to a qualified commercial clean vehicle? And all of these vehicles uh, must have been acquired uh, uh, either during the tax year for a new vehicle, uh, but for a prior owned vehicle or a qualified commercial clean vehicle, that has to be at least 2000, after 2022 and then placed into service during the tax year. So if you are able to say yes to one of those, you would go to part two, part four, or part five is applicable. If you answer no to all of those, then you can't use Schedule A to calculate a tax credit. So uh, at the end of part one, you should know which uh, section or what, which part you're going to go to to complete the uh, credit amount calculation for this particular vehicle. We'll go through all of these parts, but let's just assume that uh, we answered yes to part five. So now we're going to go down to part two. So the first, another qualifying question. Did you acquire the use uh, vehicle for use or to lease to others and not for resale? So if you answer no, that implies that you either uh, are leasing it, which is uh, something that you can't take a tax credit for, or you acquired it so that you can turn around and sell it, in which case you can't claim the credit. 
But if you acquired it for use or you acquired it because you're going to lease it to other people, then you can go ahead and keep taking the tax credit. So according to the form instructions, you, you should receive the tentative uh, credit amount from the, man, uh, from the dealer. So that's going to be based on a report known as a clean vehicle, uh, a clean vehicle seller's report or uh, IRS form 15,400. So that is going to be, you know, the uh, determination of whether or not you can uh, or how much uh, credit you can claim. Uh, claim. So um, this generally is the maximum credit amount that's listed in that seller's report for the vehicle. So let's just say that the tentative credit amount is $5,000 in this case. I've read that there are credits of up to 7,500. Uh, so let's go ahead and say it's $5,000. Uh, in line 10, we're gonna calculate the business investment use percentage. So if you bought this for your own personal use, you can put zero and you would um, zero out line 11 and go on to part three. Let's say we use this 50% for uh, business, 50% uh, for personal. Well, first, uh, we should break down the calculation. So uh, the IRS instructions specifically state that you should divide the amount of business slash investment use miles uh, by the total uh, number of miles driven uh, during that tax year. So. Uh, that will help you determine what your credit amount is for business. So, um, but not to worry because if you don't take it here, you'll be able to take the difference in part three. I mean, really the difference is whether you're gonna put that credit on the business side of your tax return or on the uh, personal use side. So, you know, if you drove 10,000 miles during the tax year, five, uh, 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 5,000 for business use, 5,000 for personal use, then we would come up to 50%. So in this case, we multiply the $5,000 credit by 50% and we get $2,500. Uh, so you would include this on line six when we get to part two of uh, the actual form. Now, if you entered 100% on line 10, then you would stop here. You don't need to calculate a personal use percentage. However, we only, we're going to calculate the remaining 50% simply by subtracting line 11 from line 9. So again, uh, we had 2,500 up here. We subtract that from the 5,000. We arrive at $2,500 that you can claim as a personal use credit. And you would put this on line 9, which is in part 3 of the form itself. In part four, we're going to uh, determine if you can take a credit and how much that credit would be for a previously owned clean vehicle. So uh, questions 13A through 13D are qualifiers. Uh, so if you uh, don't meet that criteria, then you can't claim a credit amount for this vehicle. Uh, 13A, is the sales price more than $25,000? Uh, so uh, if yes, then you can't claim this vehicle for the credit because a previously owned clean vehicle has to be less than $25,000. 13B, did you acquire this for use and not for resale? Answer no if you're leasing from another person. This is the exact same question that we had in part two and the exact same rules apply here. If no, you cannot claim a tax credit. Uh, in part three, we're going to uh, determine whether or not you can be claimed as a dependent on someone else's tax return. So again, if you can, uh, then, you, then you can't claim a tax credit. Uh, so you would have to just stop here. If you can't be claimed as a dependent, then you'll go to line 13D. 13D asks is, if the vehicle is a qualified fuel cell motor vehicle. Uh, it says yes or no. The instructions don't really give any clarifying guidance on what happens if yes, what happens if no. But I will say that going through the instructions, uh, there are criteria that a qualified fuel cell vehicle can meet. I've put uh, that information as well as descriptions of the credit amounts, 
uh, you know, how much the credit is, what the qualifying requirements are for each type of vehicle. All of those are in the respective sections of the article. So if you uh, go to the link in the show notes, we'll link to the article and you can dig into a little bit more detail on the criteria for uh, specific vehicles. So in line 14, we're going to enter the sales price of the vehicle. Line 15, we're going to multiply that by 30%. So the ceiling for a previously owned clean vehicle is 30% of the sales price, uh, up to the sales price being $25,000. So in this case, that 30% equals $6,000. Uh, but the maximum total credit is $4,000. So realistically, if your vehicle costs... Um, anywhere significantly more than say uh, like thirteen fourteen thousand dollars then the extra money really doesn't increase your credit so I think fourteen thousand times thirty percent gets you roughly in the neighborhood uh, may, uh, yeah between thirteen thousand and fourteen thousand I think it's like thirteen thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars so four thousand dollars is the maximum credit that's the amount that we're going to put here on line 17. We would include this on line 14 of the form itself. So the last part is part five, uh, qualified commercial clean vehicles. This used to be calculated on a completely separate form. So we're gonna go ahead and answer these qualifying questions and then step through the calculation. So one of the qualify or criteria is it, whether or not the vehicle is able to be depreciated. So if you can't depreciate the vehicle, then it's not qualified unless there's an exception that applies. You can answer yes if the exception is for certain tax exempt entities as discussed in the instructions. So we'll go ahead and say yes, um, that you can depreciate the vehicle for business purposes. And again, the same question in line 18B, did you acquire this for use and to lease to others? Answer no if you're leasing it. So um, a quick stop here. We've addressed this question three times. So when it comes to leased vehicles, uh, the lessor or the uh, person or business that acquires a vehicle and then leases it to someone else, they're entitled to the credit. Uh, a lessee, someone who leases from the lessor, is not able to take the credit. So in in no circumstances will two people be able to take a tax credit for the same uh, clean vehicle. Back to the show. So in line 18C, is this vehicle also powered by gas or diesel? If there is a qualified commercial clean vehicle that can also be powered by gas or diesel, uh, then the percentage uh, drops. So we'll, we'll get to that in just a moment. So in line 19, we're going to enter the cost or other basis of the vehicle. So uh, the instructions basically say if you can't figure the, this out, then just see depreciating assets under, I think, IRS Publication 521 or something like that. So not a whole lot, but um, if you can't uh, enter the cost or your tax basis, then this might be a good opportunity to run this question by your accountant if you have one. Uh, uh, you, you would want to make sure that you capture the actual uh, basis of this vehicle. In line 20, we're going to back out the ex uh, Section 179 expense deduction. This should be the same amount that you claimed as uh, Section 179 expense on IRS Form 4562 which is the depreciation and amortization tax form. Uh, you'll subtract that difference because you can't double dip. You can't take a tax credit uh, based on any amounts that you expensed in this, uh, for the same item. So we get $20,000. Uh, line 22 is going to be where we circle back to this. So if the vehicle is a clean ve uh, electric vehicle, uh, no gas or peat uh, diesel uh, involved, you would multiply this number by 30%, which is what we've done here. If it is a vehicle that is also powered by gas or diesel, then that becomes a 15% factor. So this 
$6,000 possible credit would become a $3,000 possible credit. In line 23, we're going to enter the incremental cost of the vehicle. Uh, so according to the instructions, the, the incremental cost of the vehicle would be uh, basically the, uh, the amount of, uh, you know, how much th this vehicle costs um, more above and beyond a comparable gas-powered vehicle. So. Um, so let's just imagine, I, I did this wrong, but let's imagine that the cost of this vehicle was $30,000, but a comparable uh, gas-powered one would be twenty. dollars The incremental cost is at $10,000. We'll take the smaller of either line 22 or line 23, which is $6,000. The maximum total credit is $7,500 unless the vehicle's gross vehicle uh, weight rating is 14,000 pounds or more, in which case that maximum you know, credit would be $40,000. Think semi-trucks and trailers as opposed to uh, commercial use vehicles that could be rated for civilians. Uh, so we're gonna enter the smaller of the, of the $6,000 credit or the maximum, so that's $6,000. We would put this on line 19 which is in part uh, five of uh, the form itself. So we're gonna now transition to the form. I will try and circle back in my notes to figure out what the timestamp is and, 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 and get us to uh, IRS form 8936 in, uh, using a timestamp. So uh, now we're at the top of uh, this one page tax form. Uh, we'll break this section down for you. Uh, so in part one, instead of vehicle information, this is the modified adjusted gross income amount or MAGI. You have to calculate this uh, just to make sure that you as the taxpayer uh, meet the qualifications. Uh, so we outline all of the qualifications in our article. So there's, uh, there's uh, qualifications about you as the taxpayer. There's qualifications about the vehicle and uh, those apply for each of the types of, or each of the components of the, uh, uh, of the credit. So part two is the credit for business and investment use. Part three is the credit for personal use. Part four is the credit for previously owned clean vehicles. And then part five is for the qualified commercial clean vehicles, just like uh, the rest of uh, Schedule A. So in line one, we're going to so basically, in part one, we're going to compare your modified adjusted gross income for the current tax year versus the prior tax year. So this is the most recent version of this form. We're comparing 2023 numbers to 2022. Uh, the lines and everything that we derive this information from are exactly the same. So in line 1A, we're going to enter... Uh, line 11, which is your adjusted gross income from your tax return. So in the Doe's case, it's $150,000. In line 1B, we're going to add back any income from Puerto Rico that was ex excluded. So in this case, $10,000. Uh, IRS Form 2555 is the foreign uh, in, or earned income exclusion. So line 45 is the income exclusion itself. Line 50 is the housing allowance. So in this case, we just put $10,000 for each. And then IRS Form 4563 is not that common, uh, but it's the exclusion amount for uh, residents of American Samoa. So if, if you qualify and you complete IRS Form 4563 each year, you have to add that excluded income back into this. So uh, when we compare 2023 in this situation to 2022, we have $190,000 of modified AGI compared to 180. Uh, so we're going to take the smaller of that. Now, uh, if your MAGI exceeds a certain amount on line five, so either this year or the prior year, then you can't claim the credit. So, uh, so for single taxpayers, that's 150,000. Uh, married filing jointly or a qualifying surviving spouse, that's 300,000. 
head of household is right in the middle at 225. So if John were filing as a single taxpayer, he could not claim this tax credit. If he were filing as a head of household or if he was filing with his wife, Jane Doe, then he would. So in part two, and, and from here on out, these numbers will not match what we just went over in Schedule, uh, schedule A. But uh, really, uh, we're using this as an opportunity to total up all of the uh, investment or all of the different credits. Again, for each vehicle, you will need to complete a unique Schedule A. So when we go through parts two, three, four, and five, we're talking about aggregate numbers uh, from all of the Schedules A. So in this case, we took $6,000. That was the total credit amount figured in part two of Schedule A. Uh, and again, multiple Schedule A's could apply. Uh, the new clean vehicle credit that was passed down uh, from partnerships or an S corporation uh, through a K-1, uh, then uh, let's just say that John Doe received $1,000 in a pass-through credit. Uh, so he's going to combine that. He would put seven thousand uh, dollars. So if if this is a partnership that's reporting this, then that would go on to the partnership schedule K uh, for John Doe. Uh, if he's filing as an individual taxpayer on schedule C, then this would be on IRS form thirty eight hundred as a general business credit in part three, line one Y, and then that would flow through to. Uh, schedule three of his tax return. In part three, we're going to uh, calculate the credit for personal use uh, of the clean vehicles. So uh, we don't need to subtract the business use from anything else here. We already did that. So uh, let's say that the total credit amount for part three was $5,000. Uh, line 18, we're going to compare this to line 18, which happens to be John's total tax liability plus uh, a couple of items that are added on Schedule 2, uh, namely the alternative minimum uh, uh, alternative minimum tax or AMT uh, that's on IRS Form 6251, and then any excess uh, advance premium uh, tax credit that he may have accepted. Uh, because he was participating in the uh, health market exchange. So those two additional taxes would uh, go here. But line 18 basically says take your tax liability and then add line three from schedule two. Those are the, t the, the two additional taxes I just explained. So let's just say that that amount is $8,000. So this is a non-refundable tax credit uh, you can't take more in tax credits uh, than your entire tax liability uh, is. So uh, you can bring your taxes down to zero, but not beyond zero. So uh, in line 11, we're going to enter some personal credits from uh, the tax return. And basically, that includes uh, the following tax credits. Uh, so we're going to include foreign tax credit from IRS Form uh, 1116, credit for child and dependent care expenses on IRS Form 2441, education credits on uh, IRS Form 8863, retirement savings contributions credit, uh, energy efficient home improvement credit, uh, credit for the elderly or disabled, and then a credit from IRS Form 8978. And actually, uh, the credit for previously owned clean vehicles, which is in line 18 below. So we're going to total all of these credits up here. Let's just say that that's $6,000, or sorry, up here in line 11. That's $2,000. We're going to back out those credits, and we come up with $6,000. So if our personal use credit was more than $6,000, We'd, we'd be capped at 6000 In this case, we're going to take the lesser of those two, uh, line 9 or line 12. We're going to put that here and then on Schedule 3, uh, line 6F. 
So uh, if there, if line 12 happens to be bigger than line nine, uh, that basically means that uh, you have unused credit that you're not going to be able to claim. Unfortunately, if your tax credit reduces down to zero, uh, the excess is an unused credit. You can't carry it forward. You can't carry it back. You really can't do anything with it. So that's unfortunate. In part four, we're going to do something similar for previously owned vehicles. So starting with line 14, we'll enter the, uh, the credit from all of part four or all the part four for all of schedule A. We're going to enter the same amount from line 18 uh, on your, you know, from your uh, adjusted gross income or your, sorry, your, uh, your tax liability plus the AMT plus the excess um, advance premium tax credit. In line 16, we're going to enter the same personal credits except for uh, the uh, credit for previously owned clean vehicles obviously does not go into calculating its own credit. Uh, so we're going to subtract the lines, uh, uh, the, those credits, $2,000 from the, uh, the total uh, tax uh, uh, in line eight, 15, and we get $6,000. So again, if this were zero or less, you'd stop here. You can't claim it. We're going to take the smaller amount, which is $4,000. We'll put that on line 6M of your Schedule 3. So again, if line 17 is smaller than line 14, then you have an unused credit that you cannot carry forward or bring back. In Part 5, we're going to calculate the total credit uh, from all of the Part 5s from Schedule, or from schedule A. Uh, in line 20, we're going to enter the qualified commercial clean credit from partnerships and S corporations uh, uh, as passed down through the Schedule K-1s, and then we're going to add them together. If you are reporting this as a partner or uh, as a partnership or an S corporation, you'd put this on Schedule K. Everyone else will put this on IRS Form 3800, Part 3, Line 1 AA. So... Uh, that uh, is a wrap for covering IRS Form 8936 clean vehicle credits. We do cover all of this in a lot of detail in our article. So check out, uh, check out the article on teachmepersonalfinance.com. If you type in IRS Form 8936, you'll get the entire article, including Schedule A. So, and we'll put links in the show notes to all of the different uh, forms and schedules that we mentioned in this video. So, uh, you know, specifically the articles and the videos that we've created about those resources. So if you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. If you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions or comments, or if there's another topic that you'd like to see in an upcoming video, please hit me up in the comments section. Thank you very much and have a great day.